with my lightest color which is E triple zero and I'm going to color her face first. I'm not going to color her eyelids because in this case I'm going to make them pink, give her a little bit of color. And to start I'm just putting on a light coating of E triple zero. Forget her ear. And try to use the side of your your Copic marker as much as you can. Okay, so we have a light coating of E triple zero. And now I'm going to use E double zero and I'm going to do a tiny bit of what we call shadow mapping. So I'm going to start putting in where somewhere I want some of these shadows. And I don't want a strong nose, but I do want a little bit of a nose on her. So I'm just putting a tiny line here. And her hair is going to cast a shadow. So I'm going to put a tiny bit down the edge of this hairline in her ears. Also along this edge of a hairline. Put some underneath her eyes. Just tiny bits. And I'm not even sure how well you can see that because they're so similar in color. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to go to E11. E11 is a much darker color. Then I'm going to go back with E21 and I'm going to start blending this out. So I'm going to start where I did the E11, start bringing that down a little bit. Then I'm going to go back down to my E triple zero. Start fading that down. On this side of the eye. Take my E triple zero and finish blending that out. Softening those edges. Don't be afraid to turn your paper. And I'm going to add a little bit of blush with R20. Just a tiny bit. And again, I'm going to blend that out with E triple zero. Okay. And this skin tone's a lot darker than the skin tone I normally use. And that's okay. It's going to, it'll be okay once we color the rest of her. So now I'm still taking E triple zero and now I'm going to color her neck and her arms. So just trust that this will work out. And don't forget she has a little bit of a bosom. Now I'm going to take Hero again and work my way back up. Putting in some shadows. Don't be afraid to turn your page. Okay, I'm gonna go back in with E11. I'm just gonna add a tiny little bit. And 
and generally the back sides of the arms because they're closer to the body tend to be darker and also a tiny bit near the clothes and I'm just putting a very tiny amount on then I'm going back with E21 Blending that out. And double zero. Then all the way back to E triple zero. Okay, and lastly, I'm going to do her legs. Putting a, a little bit of E11 where her clothes would cast a shadow and then I'm going to grab really close to the nib and I'm going to put a line because that one leg will cast a shadow on the other leg. Just adds a little bit of definition. And this is a real thin couple millimeter thick line. Back with E21. This is E00, I'm just blending this back out, trying to soften any hard lines that we have. And then I'm going to my lightest color again, blending this out. So at the moment she looks a little bit more pink than I normally would have liked them, but I'm trying to get used to darker colors because I think in the end that they they pop a little bit more. And so every time I get to this point, I kind of panic a little bit and go, oh my gosh, she looks so pink, she looks so red, I'm not really sure if I like it. Just trust yourself and go with it. Um, we can go back and touch up little details if, if we don't like something as we go, but I'm going to go ahead and color her clothes. I'm going to start with my darkest color in this case. You could start with either, but I have a good idea of where I want the shadow in this case.
And don't forget this little bit up here. Just adding a little bit. Now I'm going to drop down to YG06 and go over that and blend it out. These markers blend really easy, so this is an easy one to do this with. Then going to YG03. I'm gonna let that dry a bit, and I might go back in and just put a, a couple little shadows in on that. While that does that, arise drying, I'm gonna work on her shoes. Um, I get asked a lot whether I color light to dark or color dark to light. And I think it depends. If I have a good understanding of where the shadows are, I color dark to light. If I'm not sure, I color light to dark. So for hair, uh, I'm gonna start with dark to light again. And my first color I'm gonna pick is E99. And I'm gonna draw in the shadows first. This real th thin, line on her bun and I'm going to add some additional pieces of hair going up towards the top. There. And her part is going to be the darkest. So I'm going to add some E99 in there, and I'm going to continue these lines over. I'm just trying to give her hair a little bit more shape and definition. The artist didn't provide us with a ton of information about how her hair is moving and I still want it to have some shape. So these lines are going to help give us that shape. And if you're unsure, you can always go back and add more. So now I'm going to drop down to an, my lighter color, which is YR24. And I'm just going to continue a little bit farther with these.
drop down to an even lighter color, Y21. Start filling in some of these wider spaces. And notice I'm flicking from the darker part. And following the shape of her head. If the hair curls, so is my stroke. And now I E50, which I'm going to continue to go. And I'm still not going to try to cover up every little space of white. I missed a little spot here, so I'm going back in. And hair in the in the back is going to be darker. Hair in the front is going to be lighter. And then my last step is going to be going over this again with E99. And I am just trying to darken in these lines so they look a little bit more shadowed, they're recessed, they're, I don't want them to be Sorry, I got lost my own thought. See, this is what's giving your hair shape, so I want to make sure that these are still in there. And they do get blended out as you go over them with your, your lighter color. And hopefully you can see how that... makes the hair feel more like hair. Rather than just a blob on her head. Okay. And lastly, I'm gonna take a little bit of pink R20 and I am going to go over her eyelids. I wanted to make them pink. I'm not gonna spend a whole lot of time on blending on these because I'm gonna put um, glitter on top to give them a little bit of a shimmer. So this little fairy has um, some fun little makeup on. On her lips, I'm gonna add some R20. But I'm going to go back with some EO4 in the spots where I think it's darker, where the lips come together. Add a little bit of EO4. And just some lipstick on. To finish her off, to do her eyes, I'm going to use B91. And then I'm also going to add a little bit of B95 just to add some shape. Depth to her eyes and you can blend that out again by going back to your lightest. I'm also going to use B91 in her wings. So wherever I thought there'd be a little bit of shadow, I'm just putting down a little bit of color. And in the spots closest to her body, I'm going to add a little bit make it a little bit darker.
carry that a little farther, blend it out. Perfect, I'm just leaving that. Um, she has a little wand in her hand. I'm not even gonna try to do any blending on the wand. I'm just taking E33, coloring the stick of the wand. Oops, wrong end of the marker. Take Y11 and add a little shading. And I'm not, again, I'm not spending a ton of time because I plan on adding some glitter to this part. So I just want it to have a little bit of color. And the last thing I'm gonna do is color this ruffle on her dress. This is YG61. And I'm taking YG67 and adding in a little bit of shadow. And then I'm gonna blend that out. So it's a little bit darker green than her fit. And there you go, there you have Tinkerbell. Um, she's cute with or without her little accident here at the end. And put her on a card. And I hope this is helpful and you agree that the skin, once everything else is all colored, isn't too dark. Um, have a great day, we'll see you next time.